Scotland has become the first country in the world to make period products free. The bill was passed unanimously on Tuesday following a campaign brought forward by a member of the Scottish Parliament. First Minister Nicola Sturgeon praised the legislation, calling it, quote, an important policy, and thanked members of the campaign, including the Cabinet Secretary for Communities and Local Government, Aileen Campbell, who has joined us today to discuss this important milestone. Cabinet Secretary, thanks so much for joining us on Quick Take today. Scotland was the first country to make period products freely available in educational institutions, and now you've made history again. How hard was it to, to make this happen? Well, it's been a remarkable journey for the country uh, since 2007, from the very early pilots that we, we took forward in Aberdeen, right through the development and honing of an approach uh, across the country. Uh, this legislation ultimately now locks in the good practice in law that has been happening across the country for, for, for many years. So we have products available in schools and universities and colleges and public libraries, community spaces. Uh, it's also sh seen a real shift in the culture. And so workplaces, workspaces, uh, all uh, taking uh, on the, 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 the challenge of ensuring that people don't have to be caught short, that, that, that periods are something not to be embarrassed or shamed about. And uh, in amongst all that, we're tackling period poverty uh, as well. So we've led the way in terms of the development of the policy. And now we're a world first in terms of locking that in in law. Talk a little bit about this this concept of period poverty that you referred to. How big of an issue is it in Scotland? Um, and 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 for somebody who who may not realize, why is this such a big deal? Well, I think it's probably a, an issue for 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 all countries. Um, it's not, and it should also be seen and, and viewed as. Uh, not something in and of itself, but a symptom of poverty. And poverty happens across, unfortunately, uh, all of uh, your country and ours. Um, and if you don't have the means for something as basic and as necessary as uh, period products, then you're going to struggle. Women, it's not a luxury. Women need these products. And if you don't have the financial means by which you can buy them, then we've heard some awful stories about people using uh, unsuitable materials, using them for longer, uh, going without, making sure that they're choosing other things in which to, to, to spend their scarce household budgets on. But I think it should be viewed purely as a, as a symptom of poverty, and it's poverty that we need to, to tackle and, and to challenge. The other thing that's important about these policies, though, is it's about tackling the, uh, the issue of dignity, the mm. tackling it the issue of the continued and persistent shame and embarrassment around having your period. This is something that people who have women, girls, people who menstruate have had for since the year dot. And and still yet we, we, we find it something that is difficult to talk about. So in amongst the legislation and amongst the action around making sure products are freely available, we've also been taking forward work to, to raise awareness, to tackle the stigma and, and to make sure that periods in Scotland are something we can talk openly about. Can you give us some numbers here and, and, and the, just how much this is, is costing the government and how you're able to work this out? Is it a public private partnership? Are you getting donations to uh, discounts on products? So we have um, invested since uh, 2017 about uh, 20, 21 million pounds uh, over the years in terms of developing and providing products, uh, providing resources to our partners. So in local government, the local authorities have received money so that the educational institutions, the schools can have products available. We've been working with our partners in universities and colleges so that they make sure that products are available there too. So it has been a partnership, it's been a collaboration. We've um, uh, estimated that the, the, the bill may cost uh, 8.7 million uh, going forward, but also that's dependent on what uptake might look like in the future. So it's a priority, it's a choice that we've made. It's a, an issue that we've decided as a government, as a country uh, to do collectively to, to try and tackle. So um, in amongst all that, we've also been working with social enterprises uh, on a locator app. So Hey Girls, a social enterprise that's providing products, we're working with them to, to so that women can download the app, they can look at where they are, see where products are available so they can access them. Uh, we've been working and trying to encourage businesses, our public agencies, to make sure that workplaces have uh, products available. So it is a real collaboration uh, and it's changing culture uh, as well. What is the message that, that you have for other countries that aren't even thinking about this, that perhaps should be thinking about this? What is that that you want them to take away from what you were able to do in Scotland? 
So maybe for, for, for a start, the recognition that this is not something that should be hidden away or not talked about or spoken about. There'll be women in workplaces and people who menstruate in workplaces around the world who'll be hiding tampons up their sleeve, being embarrassed about what that means, maybe being caught short, uh, suffering the indignity of that uh, as well. So it's about us recognising that this is a normal, natural thing that we all need to recognise and be open about. So it's about changing the dialogue, changing, raising the debate, raising the discussion. But also it's about thinking about how we, what is the kind of country that we want to be? So in Scotland, we want a country that has gender equality at its heart. And, and this is one part and one way in which we can do that, making products available freely to, to, to people around the country in order to make life a bit easier. The other thing, though, I would say and bear in mind for other countries is that we're already trying to support and help through our learning, uh, other countries that are trying to take this path towards ensuring that they can take similar action and activity. So my other message would be, if you are a country and if you are or a, or a local government or, a, or, or somebody in charge of a, of a, a, a state in, in America, if you want any help and advice, then come and get in touch with us. We can help you with some of the learning that we've amassed. It might not always fit your purposes, but certainly there's no point in reinventing the wheel when we've already tried to explore some of the avenues that work. And also, I would I would urge people in other countries to, to engage with the, their communities. We've developed and honed this uh, policy approach through engagement with people themselves. What works for them? It can't be just dreamt up by ministers in the parliament or in a government building uh, or, or whatever civic space. This has to be meaningful and impactful for people around the country. And so that means we need to take on board the voices of lived experience. What's it like to live in poverty? Mm. What is the barriers? Where, where do you go? And what would you? how would you access these, these products? And also to engage with sp school students and uh, university students as well. You know, we might have had the assumption that young people might have wanted it in a particular place, but when we engage with young people, they tell us something very differently. And, and, and the other thing is that this policy will continue, even though it's locked in in law, this will continue to adapt and evolve. Right. And hopefully in the future, we'll have seen the stigma start to erode and we'll be in a better place for it. Cabinet Secretary for Communities and Local Government, Eileen Campbell, thank you so much for joining Quick Take today. We appreciate it. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.